Welcome everyone. We are excited that you've joined us for this informational session to explain a bit about COAT and our fellows community. So let me take a moment to introduce myself. I know a lot of you on the call. I recognize some names and that's always exciting to see familiar, uh, to see <laughs> familiar names, not faces, right? My name is Erin Maney and I'm a senior instructional designer with Open SUNY as well as a member of the Open SUNY COAT community core team. We also have some other members of our COAT team joining us today, and um, they're going to be introducing themselves later in the webinar. So thank you for taking the time to join us and learn more about what it means to be an Open SUNY Fellow. If you would take a moment and type in the chat what campus you are from, that'll help us get a sense of our community. And it's always fun to see our network and where everybody is. So we have UB and Broome, Fredonia, Open SUNY. <laughs> Buff State Empire, Monroe, Jamestown, great. Niagara, Brockport, mm -hmm. Maritime, wonderful. Thank you. So to give you a little bit of an overview and some background, last month we launched our recent fellows campaign as a call to online practitioners across our system, as well as those outside of SUNY, to come together and engage around opportunities to network, collaborate, and share. The community aims to support fellows through various levels of commitment, interest areas, areas of expertise, and professional development. The mission of the Open SUNY Center for Online Teaching Excellence is to cultivate support and promote system-wide excellence in online teaching and learning. To that effort, the Community of Practice and the Open SUNY Fellows provides many networking and engagement opportunities. Our outreach, our, our research and innovation pillar encourages both individual and collaborative projects. The competency development area offers professional development and training workshops that are self-paced and also facilitated by your campuses. We also offer open materials and resources. And our course supports team has created a comprehensive course review and refresh process that's aligned with national standards and enhanced with practical annotations to implement strategies for success. So we're really excited about the work that the center is doing and um, hopeful for your involvement in all of that. Each pillar of COAT that I just mentioned provides opportunities for active engagement by our fellows in the development and facilitation of its initiatives. I'm going to be putting a series of links in the chat for you so that you can reference the information that I'm sharing on these slides. The research and innovation pillar is a complementary effort to the other areas of COAT in that it supports research and experimentation. Not strictly for fully online initiatives, but also for those with teaching and learning innovations that have online elements. Two ways that the research and innovation pillar supports the teaching and learning aspects of COAT are through an innovative instructional technology grant and through FACT2 awards. And those are also um, something that you can be involved in, and I will put those links in the chat as well. Competency development offers professional development resources and training opportunities that are led by expert online practitioners. Two ways that you can be involved are to assist with workshop development and also to join our pool of co-associates, which are members of our fellowship that have ex experience and background in teaching others and would like to lead training workshops. The course supports area supports course development and delivery throughout the process. And we have developed a comprehensive OSCAR rubric process. And OSCAR stands for Open SUNY Coach Quality Review. The process and the rubric are aligned with national standards. We also have opportunities for some of our ex experienced fellows to be involved in leading some course reviews on your campus. Our community of practice is a community of peers with strong interconnections. Some of the recent activities that we have are a fellow chat series an Effective Practices Awards program, peer networking groups, and the opportunity to help on some COAT task groups. We also host some annual events. And all of these will be detailed throughout this webinar.
I want to give you a little bit of a snapshot of our community at this point. Our fellowship continues to grow, as many of you have already joined. These numbers will be updated on this page to reflect our new fellows who have joined as part of this campaign, which has now propelled our fellowship to over 1,000 members. And that's really exciting. On the link that I posted in the chat, you can continue to watch uh, these numbers. And it also delineates out our campuses as well. So you can look specifically for the different members on your campus. This graphic illustrates the various levels that represent experience and expertise, along with a commitment to engage in the community. While many of us fit in more than one role, members can choose to identify with the role that best aligns with their interests and commitment to support the community. So our interested fellows might be those who want to learn more about effective online teaching practices or about designing online environments. Experienced fellows are those with training and experience in teaching online or supporting others in areas of online teaching and learning. Expert instructional designers are online specialists who support the design of online environments and the development of effective instructors. Exemplar coaches and mentors have ex expertise in effective design practices, and they are willing to serve as role models to coach and mentor others. Our innovators and researchers are those engaged in scholarly work on teaching and learning online or are engaged in innovative practices or technologies. I would encourage you to further investigate these roles on our website. You can click Join Here to become an Open SUNY Fellow in the role that best fits you. There are many activities already underway for our fellows. You can be part of shaping this evolving list and helping cultivate these activities to maximize engagement and grow our community. This graphic is also on our website. And we're going to spend some time here highlighting some of the activities that are already in progress through the community of practice. Our monthly speaker series features a fellow chat in which an Open SUNY fellow has the opportunity to share what they know for the benefit of community members. On our fellow chat page, you can register for an upcoming chat, view recorded sessions of past chats, or submit a proposal for a chat. You can also access our quote notes. And quote notes are a companion guide that goes along with the chat that we publish. And it includes the speaker's bio. And it also includes a little bit more detail about what the speaker is going to share. Um, if it's research, there are some links. There are some um, additional information for you that the speaker has given us permission to share. We have recently announced our first annual Effective Practices Awards program. This program is open to Open City Fellows. And it aims to collect, share, and showcase the online best practices, strategies, and innovative online teaching and learning activities of our network of fellows. A unique feature of this award program is that all submissions will be peer reviewed and voted on through a crowdsourcing platform. Entries will also become part of an Open SUNY repository that will be searchable and shareable. Submissions are shared under a Creative Commons attribution. At this time, you can see that there's a bit of a tight deadline. This is just a mini launch to promote this initiative. And we will be putting out a second call for submissions after this first round. You can visit the link in the chat to learn more about this program and submit your own effective practice. Code is also anticipating its launch of a mentoring pilot, which is aimed to connect faculty with coaches or mentors to support them in the design, development, and delivery of their online courses. Mentors may also be asked to conduct course reviews or submit their courses to our pool of courses for observation, which is part of new faculty training workshops. Mentors would be exemplary fellows with a demonstrated history of coaching peers and supporting evidence of quality in course development and facilitation. Online groups have also been created to foster collaboration and networking around online teaching and learning. 
These groups are part of the Coach Community Platform. I'll put that link in the chat for you. Some of the groups that you can get involved in are groups by fellow role. So you can connect with other people in, let's say, an experienced online practitioner role or someone who's just interested in online teaching and learning. To join these groups after becoming a fellow, you can go to the website and you can click to join the Open SUNY Coach Center for Online Teaching Excellence group. And there you'll find instructions for accessing all of the variety of networking groups that we have. The competency development core team has developed an intricate mapping of competencies for faculty and instructional designers at the introductory experience and advanced levels of proficiency. These competencies are being aligned with professional development training, workshops, and certificate programs, and they're also being enhanced with a comprehensive badging system to recognize achievement and credentials earned. Our current offerings include our Instructional Design Certificate Program and a new to online teaching series. Open SUNY offerings are available to fellows, and members will also have the opportunity to contribute their expertise to developing future trainings, as well as the opportunity to facilitate those trainings as potential COAT associates. If you would like to take a look at the mapping of these competencies, I've put that link in the chat for you. And you can see where this team is headed with, uh, with their trainings that are in development. This timeline highlights some additional community activities on the horizon and also some uh, re in the recent past where we've come. And it also frames some of the initiatives that have been mentioned so far. So as you can see, our Effective Practices Award has gone out. We're hosting informational webinars for our fellows. There will be an Open SUNY Coat Summit in Syracuse for fellows in the advanced roles. That is a time for us to get together and network around effective topics in online teaching and learning. And we will also be announcing our award winners at that summit. In addition, you can see uh, other timeline of activities, including the mentoring pilot that is to launch next month. We'll also be publishing a blog to engage our community and our team at Open SUNY with some um, updates and items of relevance. You might choose to be a guest author to publish a blog post on there. Our Effective Practices repository is growing, and so we hope to have something together in May to be able to share those, and also our pool of code associates. So what is a Ning? That's a great question. Ning is the name of the platform where those networking groups are hosted. So Ning is the site where the Coke community groups are. Now, as an Open SUNY fellow, there are various levels of commitment for our members. So you can take a look at this graphic to see where you might choose to get involved, depending on which role you feel best suited to. This will help you kind of understand how you can give back and help showcase what you know in the community. So we are fortunate today to have some of our current fellows with us to share their experience as members of the community. I'd like to introduce Ann Reed and Chris Price, Robin Sullivan, and Lisa DeBuck. And I'd like to invite each of you to share a little bit about your involvement with the Coke community, maybe why you chose to be a fellow in your current role, or what value you take away from the fellowship. So I will get off the mic and allow you all to uh, take your turn. Hi, this is Ann Reed. I thought I would just talk first, because alphabetically, I'm first in line, if that's OK with everybody. Um, I am an instructional designer at the University of Buffalo Graduate School of Education, and my cult role is expert instructional designer. And um, let's see, I don't <laughs> know, let's see. I've done a lot of things, um, you know, as a cult fellow. I guess I would say, first of all, I've I worked extensively with on the competency development team, and that has been a great experience for me. It started um, over a year ago, and we're still working together in some capacities now. 
Um, on that team, we worked to map competencies to each of the co roles and basically design the professional development paths for these roles. And we're currently working on developing um, a badging schema so that um, you know that your professional development can be recognized in some way. And I think that um, it's been a great experience for multiple reasons. And I would say just in general, working as a or, or being a, a, a fellow has been a great experience. I feel that it's allowed me to have a voice so that the interests and concerns that are specific to my campus can be reflected in Open SUNY. That's been really the primary reason that I've gotten involved. I think that we all have um, uh, interests and concerns that are very specific to our campuses. And if we don't come together as a community to share those details, then um, you know, Open SUNY really can't be a success without the sharing of of these specifics. And so also I would I would add that I had the opportunity to to give one of those fellow chats that Aaron mentioned and my um, coat note is available online and that was a great experience because I was able to share um, a topic that's interesting to me, faculty development and and actually participate in a conversation with the larger uh, open SUNY community. Um, via that sort of um, web webinar, and then further, um, it continued in the co community social media site, the that Ning site that Aaron mentioned, and the conversation continues there, which has been um, really awesome. And I think just in general, that that um, that site has been really great for sharing ideas and opportunities, and um, just. Uh, really collaborating with people from all across SUNY. So I would say, um, yeah, I would encourage everybody to, to apply to be a, a fellow. And I'll take any questions and otherwise turn it over to Chris. Hi, everyone. Uh, I wear a couple of hats uh, within COAT uh, and uh, as a fellow. Uh, I, I have been, uh, for the last 10 years, the director of uh, Brockport Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching. Uh, although as of, and, and I actually joined COAT as an experienced online practitioner uh, because I also teach at Brockport and I have um, taught online uh, for the last uh, five years or so. Um, however, as of July 1st of this, of last year, I've been working with the SUNY Center for Professional Development as the um, uh, manager of academic programs. And so I've been working on the competency team that Anne referenced before, uh, trying to basically, you know, make sure that what the CPD does lines up with what code is up to. And, you know, we've been collaborating. And I think that that's the overall probably takeaway I would uh, hope you leave with today is that, um, Things within SUNY, Open SUNY specifically, work a lot better when we communicate with each other across campuses. Uh, we have a lot of expertise uh, within the system, and um, and again, just the, something like this Code Fellowship Program is just an opportunity to, you know, formalize, you know, maybe some of the more informal connections that we all have within SUNY. And so, uh, I am really interested in creating these communities of practice and maintaining them and figuring out how to nurture them and make them productive, but also, you know, uh, efficient as well. Uh, it's kind of sometimes difficult to do that, you know, uh, uh, across distances. But, you know, again, that's what online learning is all about, is trying to sort of leverage, you know, the, the, the power of having people come together across distance um, using technology. And so uh, if you have any questions for me about what I do at CPD or uh, about my role as a COAT fellow, uh, shoot me an email uh, or ask it in the chat. I don't know who I'm turning, turning this over to. Who's next? Is Robin here? Thanks, Chris and Anya. We have uh, Robin or Lisa, if anyone would like to share. I can go ahead if that's all right. This is Robin. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Robin Sullivan, and uh, my title is as Online Learning Specialist at the recently formed UB Center for Educational Innovation. 
And I guess one thing I just want to mention is that um, being a Code Fellow certainly gives you a lot of connections within the SUNY community. And uh, through my interactions over the years, I've had some really positive interactions with people from all over SUNY, um, being able to learn from each other, learn with each other, and just to be able to communicate and share ideas with people that have similar mindsets. I say that's probably the biggest advantage of being a Holt Fellow. And um, I, another thing, if you're a Fellow, um, you get some the direct at, um, announcements regarding training, opportunities, and events coming up. And I know um, many times, especially when you have a large campus, announcements um, that are important often get filtered through different channels. And by being a Fellow, you'll be able to be um, uh, get an announcement regarding the fellow chats as they're coming up. You can um, also become part of the coach um, expert ID community and uh, you know communicate with them on a regular basis. Um, being a fellow often can give you opportunities to be a mentor yourself or to be mentored, whichever is best for you. And one of the opportunities that was shared through COPE with um, me personally is, and through a project that I'm working on with a bunch of other people and a bunch of other campuses through SUNY is the Tools of Engagement Project. And um, the COPE fellows were extended an invitation to become TOPE mentors. And so that's, I think, just one of the examples of mentoring opportunities available through COPE. Um, and, um, yeah, the project is going to be highlighted at the upcoming COAT Summit. I'm hoping that many people on this list might um, be able to attend the COAT Summit held in Syracuse. And, uh, you know, look forward to that opportunity to actually meet people face to face instead of this uh, webinar, which uh, the webinar is actually very helpful to get many people with similar ideas together. Um, and then there's also many other events that are offered through SUNY that the COPE community would get together um, besides communicating through the COPE Ning, through the COPE Expert ID listserv, and um, also I think there's a number of uh, different conversations in the SUNY Learning Commons that uh, we would all benefit from. So Erin, thanks for sharing the link for the Tools of Engagement Project, and um, I'm available after for questions too. So thank you very much, Lisa. Thanks, Robin. I also um, want to extend the invitation. Um, I believe we have two people from our COAT team, Dave Gadu and Dan Feinberg, also on the call. If you would like to introduce yourself and say hi, you're more than welcome. Sure. Thanks, Erin. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll go first. Uh, my name is Dan Feinberg. I'm an instructional designer here at Open SUNY COAT. I've been working primarily on the um, Core supports and come to development pillars, you know, trying to get people engaged with our rubric, we call it OSCAR, um, our OSCAR rubric, trying to get people to either help review courses or have their courses reviewed or just to have a more general conversation around course, quality course design. Um, in competency development, we've been trying to get together um, identifying different competencies that online instructors need and online course designers need and trying to develop programming around that. So there's a good chance I'm coming to a campus near you soon. Um, so uh, I'd be happy to talk to anyone. Thanks. Uh, my name is Dave Gadu. I also, uh, just like Dan, work uh, as an instructional designer for COPE. And I've been focusing primarily on the uh, course review and refresh process. And that also will be a traveling roadshow coming to a campus near you. I'm glad that we could have so many people from our community joining us today and sharing your experience. We appreciate your contributions to the COPE community. So we want to make sure that we allow some time for any of your questions. We'd like to hear from you. If you have questions or comments, you can raise your hand and we'll hand over the mic, or you can feel free to type in the chat as well. 
We'll talk through some of our next steps while we're waiting for that. I'll give some people some time to type. To learn more about the community and the various roles, you'll want to visit our website, commons.suny.edu slash code slash community, and I'll put those right in the chat for you. If you would like to join the Ning, which was the code community with the, the different networking groups, that would be coachcommunity.opensuny.edu. So you could join there and request access to any of the groups that seem to be a good fit for you. If you've already joined the fellowship and you're on the call strictly for information, let me personally welcome you. We're looking forward to getting to know each of you and networking together. Any questions for any of those on our team that shared with you today or any questions in general about how you can be involved? Hey, Robin, go ahead. Hi, Erin. Um, a question has come to me um, regarding um, if the, what are the differences between the community in the code name, um, the um, expert IDs that meet monthly on the listserv and as uh, webinars and also through the SUNY Learning Commons, those communities. Could you possibly try to summarize what some of the differences are in those different avenues? Sure, I can do my best and Dan can hop in to support if I, uh, if I miss anything. Um, so the fellowship consists of all of our members in the various roles, right? And so you can, you can elect a role that best suits you. And what that really does is it kind of gives us information about your background and where you would like to get connected with um, our community across our campuses. So that's what identifying the role actually does in the fellowship itself. Um, our, our community, the Coke community, that is strictly networking groups. They're online groups where you can participate in discussion forums, share resources back and forth, and that sort of thing. The, the Commons, the SUNY Learning Commons, is actually a communication vehicle. There are groups that work in there. Those are sort of more of the open SUNY task groups that um, have some activity in there and need to, to gather and send updates. It's very much a communication vehicle. Um, so I, I hope that clarifies a little bit of each of those areas and why we would do that. So we had a question about how do you select what to sign up for. So when you go to the link in the center of this slide, the fellowship expectations one, there are the different roles that you can read about. And you can see which one you best identify with. And many of us cross over several different roles. But it's about which one you want to get engaged with as far as what it's asking of you. So you can read those. And you can select. And you just click on join here. And there's a short form. Differences with the Coke community and FACT2. So these are actually um, parallel kind of initiatives, and they support one another. A lot of the, um, the initiatives that are happening through our research and innovation area are designed to support online teaching and learning practices. And so while COAT is more of the active engagement, the FACT2 and other things like our IITG grants, they help to recognize those those, the work of the community. Yeah, so once you become a fellow, great question, how should you get involved? So a couple different things that are happening. I would encourage you, if you have an effective practice, you could submit that to um, our award program. You can also participate in the fellow chats by, by coming and attending the chats or also submitting a proposal to lead a chat. If you find that you have an area of expertise that hasn't actually been identified yet in an activity that CODE is currently doing, we would love for you to just email us at the address on this slide so that we can get a sense of what it is specifically that you would like to do, because we're always looking for folks who want to showcase um, some, some new initiatives and new work. If you are someone who is involved in social media, right, you can help us with our blog. So I would look over the timeline and the benefits chart that I gave you in a couple earlier slides and see where 
you feel that you can best connect. Sure, Rosalind, you're actually going to get a, um, a recorded copy of this session. And so all of the links that have been shared with you today are going to be in that recording. So you can revisit this at any time. Sure. Robin, another question? Um, yeah, Erin. Um, you mentioned that there was an earlier webinar regarding mentoring. And um, I would... Uh, not aware. Is there another initiative going on that, uh, you know, is actually recruiting mentors or is that something yep. you can talk about? Sure, I can. Um, that was sent specifically right now to our existing fellows in the exemplar coach and mentor role. So we just wanted to survey that pool first to see what we have and then we'll extend that out after that. But yep, we are looking for people to connect and match up with um, two different initiatives really, the new to online, right, so any faculty who are developing courses and teaching them for the first time, we're trying to partner them with mentors. And then potentially we might be um, looking for people to lead discussions for our expert ID pool too. So we'll send out a communication to that group of fellows to invite participation to mentor other IDs. Great, thanks. I have one more question. Sure. Uh, is there a, a consolidated list of all the webinars, recordings, um, couldn't, couldn't find that easily. That would be nice to have. There is. Um, on our website, there is, in the drop-down menu, there is a news and events page. So I'll just put that in the link for you right now. And um, that has anything that is um, up and coming or that we've recently done. There should be links to those things there. Did you want to share those? Yeah. No, the mentorship is actually, this is just all volunteer, this pilot, um, and it, it can be in either your specific discipline or if you're willing to mentor folks outside of your discipline. Um, so that is something that is specific to the needs of the people and the groups that are being mentored. Right now with the mentorship pilot, we're actually just in the process of surveying the people who have identified themselves as having experience mentoring and coaching and trying to see what, what their area of expertise is and then we will know what we can offer based on our pool and we might extend that too to other roles in the community. So you'll be hearing more about that as it evolves. Yeah, that's a good question. Right now, the idea is um, faculty to faculty, but it certainly could be expanded. That's great, Katrina. It, you don't have to be fully online teaching. If you incorporate technology into your classroom, a lot of our faculty web enhance their courses, right? So they might use a learning management system or other technology as a way to expand their classroom. And that is fine. You might identify yourself as being an experienced online practitioner, perhaps, in that role um, or at the interested level. But you could read about those to see more specifically. A lot of our experienced online practitioner fellows do not have um, fully online teaching experience, and that's okay.
Sure, Karen. So to follow up with this, you'll receive a recording of this session, and all of the links that have been shared with you will be uh, a part of that recording. If anyone has more questions, I'll be happy to stay here on the call with you. If anyone um, does not or needs to leave, you're more than welcome, and I appreciate your time and attention on today's webinar, and we look forward to, to networking with you really soon. Mark, that's a great question. So it, you would be considered, um, you could be considered uh, either an experienced online practitioner or an, um, a, an exemplar coach and mentor, even if you're not electing to mentor someone. Um, what we are doing with competency development is we are putting together a series of advanced topics so that um, our, our pool of faculty who are more advanced in online teaching can further their professional development through those avenues. So those are in development as well. Okay, thanks, Erin. No problem. Ginger, at this point, we just have the numbers for the different roles. I mean, we maintain a list, so if you, you know, had a need um, for the list of people on your campus, um, we could talk about that. But right now, what we have publicized on our website is um, simply the numbers for those campuses in those roles. You're welcome, Connie. Glad you could join us. Hang on, Tom. Let me grab that for you. Tom, um, this is the link that should take you to the leaderboard that has um, our various roles and numbers across campuses. Hi, Paul. I can check that for you. Could you just put your um, email address in the chat for me? And I will let you know. OK, I will double check that for you and, and email you shortly after today's session. Donna, are you asking just to see if you have ha have already been a fellow, or are you asking for Niagara's list of fellows? OK, gotcha.
So I just want to clarify, Sherry, are you also SUNY Ulster, signed in as SUNY Ulster? Or is that someone else? Because I don't know who to tell. It just says SUNY Ulster. Oh, it's someone else. OK. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, Robin. Hi again. Um, I was wondering, this was a topic that I think we touched on briefly in the first webinar, and so it may bring up questions of other people here. Um, there's a lot of cross sections in the different types of roles. So, um, you know, if I'm a faculty, mm -hmm. although um, I'm interested in online education, that might be really clear that I would be in that role as an interested online enabled education. Um, but if I'm also interested to be a mentor, um, how would that work? And then if I'm also doing research, mm -hmm. is that something that might be coming in the future? Or do I you know, choose sure. a role based on what I'm interested in at this time? Right, so committing to a role doesn't mean that you're locked into that for forever. Um, so if at this point you are an expert ID and that is the commitment you want to give, you want to support other IDs in the community or you want to help with course design, um, maybe help to develop workshops for um, new faculty who are, who are learning to to teach online for the first time, then, then that might be the role you commit to. But maybe down the road, you become more involved in research, or you decide that you have some experience mentoring, and you would like an opportunity to do that. You can always come back to the community website and reapply in a different role. Um, and all that does by applying in those roles is say, this is where I feel I can plug in right now and best identify with. So that is really the purpose. And we do have people who have already been, begun to do that. They have signed up as, as one, maybe even just interested. And then they said, no, you know, my schedule does permit me to do a little bit more and be more involved. And so they'll sign up as another one. And I'm going to ask you to also maybe clarify just a little bit. If, if I'm a faculty and I'm interested in technology, but I have not yet dabbled in online learning, whether it's blended or hybrid. Um, you know, pretty much all the classes I teach are still traditional classes. Um, would, would I be best qualified for the role of interested in online, even though I have not yet taught online? Right. You can absolutely be in the interested role if you haven't already taught online. Mm -hmm. That is a great way to actually start in the fellowship and get connected, be able to receive the communications, to be made aware of fellow chats or other activities that are going on and stay engaged. And then as you perhaps you'll decide to take some of our competency development trainings and advance your role based on you know, your training and your experience. Thanks, Aaron. Sure. Good question. Thank you. I just want to be sure to thank again those of us um, who, those of you who are able to attend today, but also for the people from our community teams who got to share a little bit on the call. I appreciate your time and being here to introduce yourself to the fellows community. Does anyone have any other questions that I can help with? Again, the contact code at SUNY.edu email.
email is a great way to reach out if you have questions or ideas or feedback of any kind. We'd be happy to respond to you there.